Hello students and welcome to another calculus lesson. In this lesson we're going to start connecting the graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime. So let's get started. So what I'm looking at here is I've, I've got a graph here and what I want to notice is that okay what is this graph? Well this is the graph of f of x and what I want to do here is I want to make conclusions about f prime and I want to make conclusions about f double prime, the second derivative. What are those conclusions that we can draw and what can we tell because of the information that's given in that graph for f? Well, the first thing that we're going to be able to tell is that f prime of x is greater than zero on the intervals from negative infinity to negative four and negative two to one. And the reason we know that is because on these intervals from negative infinity to negative four and negative two to positive one, we know that f is increasing. So we know that f prime is going to be greater than zero. Well, what's the second thing that we know? Well, you can make these conclusions in any way that you want. Well, we know also that that first derivative f prime is going to be negative. It's going to be less than zero on the intervals between negative four and negative two and one to infinity. And the reason we know that is because f is decreasing. Now, we also know that f prime is going to be equal to zero at these three points, at negative four, at x equals negative two, and x equals one. The reason why we know f prime is gonna be zero is because these values have horizontal tangents at these x values. So at negative four, negative two, and one, we have horizontal tangents, which means that f prime is gonna be equal to zero. Well, the next thing that we know is that f prime of x is going to be switching from negative to positive here at x equals negative two. And the reason we know that is because f is changing from decreasing to increasing. So we know that f prime is changing from negative to positive. Similar to that, we know that f prime is going to be changing from positive to negative at x equals negative four and at x equals one. The reason why we know that that is going to be true is because both of these are changing from increasing to decreasing, which means that f prime is changing from positive to negative. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna point out here is that at negative three and about negative one half, f has points of inflection. So in between these points of inflection right here, we see that this is concave up. So what can I con conclude about f prime? Well, since f is concave up in between negative three and uh, negative one half, we can conclude that f prime is going to be increasing. So concave up means that f prime is increasing. Now, along with that on those other areas, so negative infinity to negative three and negative one half to positive infinity, we can tell that the graph is concave down, which means that f prime is going to be decreasing there. So the next thing that we know is that f prime is going to have a relative max here at x equals negative one half. And the reason why we know that is because it's changing from concave up to concave down there. And the final conclusion that we can draw about f prime is that it's going to have a relative minimum here at x equals three. The reason why we know that is because it's changing from concave down to concave up at x equals negative three. So now let's make some conclusions here about the second derivative. So the first thing that we'll be able to say is that in between negative three and about negative one half that the second derivative is going to be greater than zero. And the reason why we know this is because f is concave up. So concave up means that the second derivative is going to be positive, greater than zero. Now, along with that, we know that in between negative infinity and negative three, and in between negative one half and positive infinity, since the graph of f is concave down, we know that the second derivative is going to be negative. 
And the final conclusion that we can make about the second derivative of this graph is that the graph is going to be changing signs or f double prime is going to be changing signs at x equals negative three and x equals negative one half. And the reason why we know that is because those are points of inflection. All right, in this part, what we are given here is f prime. And what we wanna do justifying our conclusions are we want to make conclusions about f and we want to make conclusions about the second derivative, okay? So think about which direction you're hopping and what conclusions you can make there. I think it's a little bit easier to go from f prime to the second derivative um, rather than going um, straight from f prime to f. So if you wanna start there, but write down as many conclusions as you can and see if they match up with what I give you. So the first conclusion that we can make about f is that f is going to be increasing here between negative two and one, as well as three over two infinity. And the reason why we know it's increasing is because this first derivative f prime is positive. All of this stuff is above the x axis. So we know that f is going to be increasing. Now, along with that, we know that f is going to be decreasing f is gonna be decreasing between negative infinity and negative two and one to three. And the reason why we know it's going to be decreasing is because f prime is negative. So don't worry about where f prime, think about these conclusions and just continue to make those connections in your mind about not necessarily what's given here in front of you, but what conclusions you can draw about f and f double prime. Now, the next thing that we can say is that f of x is going to have a relative maximum here at x equals one. The reason why we can make this conclusion, we don't know what the value of the relative maximum is, but we know that one exists there because we're going from positive to negative, which means that the graph is going from, or the graph of f is going from increasing to decreasing. Along with that, we know that we're gonna have relative minimums at x equals negative two and x equals three. And the reason why we know that we're going to have minimums there is because f prime is changing from negative to positive at both of those x values. Now, something that might be a little bit difficult to see is that we're going to actually have at these maximums and minimums because f prime has a maximum at negative one or a minimum at positive two. Those are actually going to be points of inflection for f. Now the next conclusion about f we can make is that here where the graph is increasing between negative infinity and negative one and two to infinity, that f is going to be concave up because here f prime is increasing, which means f is concave up. And along with that, the next conclusion we can make is that in between negative one and positive two, that since the graph is decreasing, we can say that f is concave down in between those two points. Now, what conclusions can we make about the second derivative? So going from f prime to f double prime. Well, one of the first things I can say here is that where this is increasing between negative infinity and negative one and two to infinity, we know that f prime of x is increasing. So that means the second derivative is going to be greater than zero. It's gonna be positive. And then along with that, our next conclusion we can make is in between negative one and two, since f prime is decreasing, we know that the second derivative is going to be negative. And then lastly, we can say that the second derivative is going to be changing signs here at x equals negative one and here at x equals two. And the reason why we can say that is because f prime of x has some relative extrema, either a maximum or a minimum, which we can conclude that f double prime is changing signs there. Now in this final graph and the final problem of this video, you're actually given the graph of the second derivative. So we have the graph of the second derivative and kind of like before, we're, but we're going backwards now. And I think that actually might be one of the toughest things for calculus students is going in that backwards direction. But what conclusions can we make about f and what conclusions can we make about f prime? Okay, again, try to come up with your own conclusions before you see these answers. 
So the first thing that I notice are all these points where the graph is positive. So from zero to three, and then again from three to infinity. So all those points where the graph is positive, we know that F is going to be concave up. So that's our first conclusion. Now, along with that, the next conclusion is all these points where the graph for F double prime is negative, we know that since it's negative, since F double prime is less than zero, we know that F is going to be concave down. Now think, when you're switching concavity, what's happening? So at this point at X equal to zero, our final conclusion that we can make about F at X equals zero is that F is gonna have a point of inflection because F double prime is changing signs. So what conclusions can we make about the graph of f prime? So f prime of x is going to be increasing. So it's going to be increasing on uh, 0 to 3 and 3 to infinity. We're not saying it's concave up. We're saying it's increasing. And the reason why we know f prime is increasing is because the second derivative f double prime is greater than zero. It is positive. So since this one's positive, the previous one needs to have been increasing. Now our second conclusion is this point where it is all negative. So since this is all negative, f prime, what was coming before it needs to have been decreasing. So we know that f prime between negative infinity and zero was decreasing because f double prime is negative. And the final conclusion that we can make here at x equal to zero is that f prime of x is going to have a relative minimum there because f double prime is switching from negative to positive. So you're just going one step if it's switching from negative to positive. We know that that is going to be, well, decreasing to increasing is going to be a relative minimum. So that is actually going to conclude this video about the connections between the graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime. In the next video, we're going to be looking at some calculator questions that we can use the calculator on, um, some free response style, as well as some calculator questions that are going to be multiple choice, some AP style questions there. So stay tuned for that. Of course, if you're, if you're having trouble connecting the graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime, keep working at it. And if you're completely lost, please, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.